It's almost a shock to discover how perfectly the subtitle world sums up Capcom's achievements with the newest Monster Hunter. The series' first Western console game since the Wii brings along the thrilling co-op boss battles and near-overwhelming customization of its forebears on a scale we've never seen. Its elaborate ecosystems seem like they tick along nicely without your involvement, but more importantly, it feels like a place in which I could end up living. Monster Hunter's series of action RPGs has always been one that offers much and more. You begin with nothing but a flimsy weapon and the chainmail on your back and take on monster hunting quests, but its simple gameplay loop quickly and rewardingly expands your capabilities. You harvest materials from your prey and the environments they live in, use them to build stronger gear, and then use that gear to take on stronger monsters to get even more gear. That loop is made much more complex by 14 weapon types with entirely different control systems, hundreds of items to craft, and numerous interlocking stats and systems. Systems. That complexities historically limited Monster Hunter's mainstream appeal, and after just the first few hours in World, it becomes abundantly clear that none of that's been thrown under the bus in the name of accessibility. Instead, quality of life improvements have smoothed off a few rough edges, making crafting simpler, armor skills more abundant, and looting quicker and more efficient. But few improvements seem to have been made with the first-time player in mind. It remains crazy to me that weapon tutorials in this series are still so meager. Those coming in looking for an all-encompassing adventure story will find it lacking too. World's central plotline of travelling to a new continent in the wake of a migrating elder dragon is a neat one, and pleasantly naturalist in tone. Well, as naturalist as you can be in a game about killing mythical creatures to make shoes. But it's nothing more than a pretext for the near-endless hunts ahead. The bottom line is that anyone coming in expecting a My First Monster Hunter experience simply won't find it. I urge you to at least try it anyway, because while not everyone will enjoy this much management alongside the maiming, Monster Hunter World is one of the most consistently exciting, satisfying, and gratifyingly absurd games I've played since, well, the last Monster Hunter game. Above and beyond anything else you can say about World, there is a lot of it. It's stupendously generous with content, and better, matches that with consistently making your time feel well spent instead of on pointless grinding. Weapon upgrade trees feel more labyrinthine, forcing you through a wider gamut of quests to get to what you want. To get a poison dripping Rathian charge blade, for instance, you'll need to take multiple quests to scavenge monster bones, take down furious walking fish, and then sever the barbed tail of the Rathian itself. In the process, leftover rewards and carved off materials can be used to make armor sets, each piece now offering extra skills that can make you significantly more powerful. Say you've struggled with a mud-spewing Baroth, throwing on a suit of muck-resistant armor suddenly turns the tide on that fight. Every system fits and works together like precise clockwork engineering, sending you ticking from one task to the next, crafting better and better equipment, and gradually building a toolbox of murder weapons tailor-made for world's increasingly dangerous enemies. Perhaps the most fundamental change here is in how you find the monsters. The new Scout Flies are a clue-based tracking system, where everything from footprints to gobs of mucus unlocks your prey's location, as well as more information about its weaknesses and habits. You're essentially unlocking a wiki page, and I promise it's more exciting than I've made that sound. It makes World's looping structure even more rewarding. World makes a much-needed change to multiplayer, too, combining the series' traditionally separate single and multiplayer campaigns into a single string of quests that can be played either alone or in up to four-player co-op. It's a step in the right direction, but also creates its strangest problem. To play a story quest, all players must have watched any included cutscenes and their absurdly poor lip-syncing first. Why? The major upgrade, however, has clearly come in Monster Hunter World's graphical spectacle, which can finally match that design. Hunting grounds are huge, seamless maps that range from beautiful to breathtaking. The amazing Coral Highlands area in particular makes clearest how beneficial this shift in hardware has been. This new continent's locales also allow for a mostly brand new crop of monsters. Freakish, skinless megadogs, tar-covered wyverns that make armor out of other monsters' bones, and a chameleon bird that pukes poison. The artists have been working overtime. But it's not World's looks that benefit most from the technical upgrade, it's the AI. Monster Hunter stars have always been the monsters themselves. Gorgeous knots of fantasy illustration, brilliant animation, and inspired combat design. Battling them is closer to a dance than a brawl. Knowing your moves, from the hammer's slow stomping strikes to the insect glaive's aerial acrobatics, and learning the monster's steps in return. You'll be clumsy when you begin, but fight on and you'll soon be severing tails and breaking off scaly armor for valuable rewards. Every battle mixes the in-depth learning of a fighting game with the grandeur of a classic game boss fight. It's Monster Hunter's stock in trade, and all of this carries over from previous games, but World adds a new variable, personality. 
with multiple monsters now sharing the same seamless space, Capcom's had to find ways to make them interact with both you and each other. You'll quickly begin to learn which monsters are territorial and which aren't, and every area has a clear food chain in which monsters, mostly, know their place. I've spent half-hour expedition missions just watching these animals move around, learning where they prefer to hunt or nest, watching their fight or flight reflexes kick in, simply because I enjoyed getting to know them. I've already spent over 50 hours completing the story, but I know I have hundreds of hours more to play from here before I hunt down the strongest and most elusive of the game's monsters. I feel nothing but anticipation at that prospect. This is the most audacious Monster Hunter game yet. World manages the balance between staying true to the series' ideals and its addictive loop of combat with intimidating monsters and meaningful upgrades that fans love, but it also takes a dramatic leap into a look, feel and size that feels truly new. Its sheer depth and the commitment required is still intense, but it clearly isn't Capcom's aim to court the casual crowd. This is as all-consuming and incredible a ride as ever. If you like that and want to see more, why not check out an entire quest from start to finish, or a compilation of monsters just fighting each other for ages.